Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about lifted up by pruning. Lifted up by pruning. Just the other day, we had this tree in our front yard, and the branches were hanging down really low. So every time you try to walk under the tree, you got to duck underneath the branches. And I was just getting this nudge from God to go out there and start pruning the tree so that you could walk underneath it. And so I went out there and I got started. And as I start pruning this tree, I cut off a couple little branches. And immediately, as soon as I cut one of those branches off, the, the branch that is hanging out that was very low starts to rise up, starts to get lifted up. And immediately I was reminded about a year ago, almost to the day a year ago, actually, because I looked it up. We had done a partner Zoom call in our program, The Abundant Life Blueprint. What we talked about in John chapter 15, Jesus says, you know, God's going to prune us. He's the gardener. If we're fruitful, he's going to prune us so that we'll produce even more fruit. But that word for pruning can also be translated as lifted up. And you'll see, if you go online, you'll see people arguing back and forth. Does it mean pruning? Does it mean lifted up? And we have one of our partners. He said he had learned a lesson from somebody who specializes in these things about how you can do both at the same time. You can both prune and lift up at the same time. He said it was a very similar situation to what I was talking about. There's a tree where the branches are hanging down low. And he said, you don't need to go in and cut off all of the big branches. He said, if you just go in and you cut off all the little branches that are branching out, it'll take some of the weight off of those branches. And immediately, those branches will begin to lift up because they don't have all those weight on them, hanging on them, pulling them down. And so as I began to prune this tree, I began to do that. And just amazing to watch how quickly those branches just get lifted up, how quickly they elevate. Once you cut off that excess weight that's on there. It's amazing to watch that. So this is a principle we talked about about a year ago. The book of Ezekiel, over and over, he says, I was lifted up by the Spirit. So we're going to be taking communion over this today. Asking for God's help to help us to prune those little things that are weighing us down. So that we get lifted up by the Spirit. But why are we taking communion every day? About 10 years ago, I had pretty much no spiritual life whatsoever was just doing life on my own without God. Unfortunately, I was walking in darkness and didn't even know it. But life wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. was stressed out all the time. just had the weight and pressure of life on me. At the time, I was running my personal training gym business. And my business was just very up and down. I had some months where I'm losing thousands of dollars in a month. And I remember going for a walk with my wife one day, just telling her over and over, there's got to be a better way to live. There's got to be more to life than this. And it wasn't for a lack of searching or seeking. I had started traveling all over the country. I was studying with the best health and fitness experts in the world. Taking courses, reading books, learning about business and health and family. All these different areas of life. But I wasn't finding what I was looking for. And then one day I came across this challenge to start reading one chapter from the book of Proverbs every day. Proverbs has 31 chapters. So on day one of the month, you read Proverbs chapter one. Day two of the month, you read Proverbs chapter two. Then you keep going like that until the end of the month and you start back over again. And so I've been doing this for a while. And immediately I began to see my way of doing things and God's way of doing things. We're definitely not in alignment with each other. And after a while of doing this, one morning, Proverbs 13, 22, just seemed to jump off the page of me. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse got me thinking, what's the most valuable thing that we can pass on to future generations? After some time of thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that the most valuable thing that we could pass on would be wisdom or teaching or training for how to truly live. And so I made a commitment that day. I'm going to create manuals, lessons, systems, teaching, training for all the different areas of life. Areas like purpose and health and family and finances, order, time and community. But really, when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God. I began to press into him. He just began to show up, began to teach me and train me. My relationship with him just began to grow exponentially. He began to take me through his process, began to teach me a different way of living. 
I just began to document what he was taking me through. And over the course of about 10 years, it's turned into a whole program that we call the Abundant Life Blueprint with books and courses and partners. But out of everything that we do in the Abundant Life Blueprint, I believe the most important thing is daily communion. Daily communion is what I call the number one table turner for all of life. It has the ability to just turn things around. When you got situations that are not going the right way, to just simply turn them around, to create a turning point in our life. And it changes the trajectory of our lives going forward. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. You know, Jesus, we're talking about this John 15 passage. Jesus talked about remaining in him, abiding in him. And communion is one of the best ways that I know. Helps us to produce much fruit in our lives. The Apostle Paul says, every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. Which in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until we prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation of all these benefits that are found in the new covenant. And personally speaking, I found us this way. We can take these promises that God has made and we can activate them in our life and experience God's help walking in those promises from this point on. And communion is very powerful because we're taking the spiritual principles of Jesus, of his sacrifice, and pulling that into our mind and remembrance in our soul and combining it with something practical and physical that we actually do to trigger those memories. Physical things help to trigger certain memories. But it's also important we take it the right way. Every time we take communion, to take it with the fear of the Lord, with deep honor and reverence and awe for the sacrifice of Jesus. I think it's important we remember both sides of the cross. On one side, we remember all that he went through. That God was willing to send his one and only son for us. But on the other side of the cross, we remember what his sacrifice means to us, what it did for us. He connects us back to God, makes us right and holy and perfect in his sight. So the process we typically use, we start with about a two-minute long prayer that's mostly scripture. Coming from Ephesians chapter 1 and the prayer of Jabez found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And then we take a few minutes to examine ourselves. Because the Apostle Paul says some people are weak and sick. And they die early because they don't examine or judge themselves before taking communion. And if communion has the power to do that in the negative, I believe it has the power to do the opposite of that in the positive if we'll take it the right way. To make us healthy and strong and give us long life. And then after our time of communion, we've been talking about some practical physical workout tips and advice. Because I truly believe the principles of physical exercise are meant to teach us how to exercise our faith, to receive this grace by faith and to experience God doing the work through us. And then once we understand how to do that, we can take those same principles and apply them into the other areas of life. So let's get started with our prayer. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening, their families, all those connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. And I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe, the same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. If I ask you to bless us, to make your face shine upon us and let us find grace and favor in your eyes, to expand our borders and our territory, to expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace, 
your love and your goodness and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. I ask you to send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today and help us be sensitive to those opportunities. I ask you to keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and to do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. We ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, we're going to go through the other half of prayer. This is our time to examine ourselves. Are we making today a masterpiece? How are we going to do that? We're going to get connected to the master. Our relationship with God, we have this eternal perspective with him. But our relationship with him, it's got to be brought down into today. To impact all the different areas of life today. And remember, masters of anything are simply masters of the fundamentals. That's where we talk about executing these four fundamentals and bringing some presence and some energy and some fun into these fundamentals today. So before we get into the fundamentals, just a quick reminder, God's got a process he's taken us through. When he took the people in the Old Testament from Egypt to the promised land, they couldn't just go straight there. They had to go through a process because God had to get them to get, let go of their old ways. And to embrace this new way of living, to do things God's way. He releases them from darkness, from slavery and bondage in Egypt. They cross the Red Sea, which the Bible says was like their baptism. Then they go into the wilderness and God has them send spies to spy out the land. They come back with this report that it really is the promised land. It really is this beautiful, amazing land. But unfortunately, most of the people won't believe. It looks too big. There's giants in the land. And they don't believe that God is bigger than those giants. And they want to go back to the way things used to be. Only two guys get to go. And they're the guys that just simply believe that God has something better for them. Then they got across the Jordan River, which took a step of faith. The waters did not part in the Jordan River until they stepped into the waters first. They had to take a step of faith. And then they crossed over to the other side. A circumcision happens, a cutting away of the old, a letting go of the old ways and embracing this new way of living where we're learning to rely and trust on God, to receive these promises. We have to receive them by faith. All the promises that we receive, we, receive, we inherit them through faith and patience. It's learning to rest and to trust in God on the other side. To stop trying to effort and force our way to, through it and just learn to rely and trust on God to bring us into these promises that he has for us in our life. So our four fundamentals. Our first one, let's get positioned in the light today. This is the on-off switch. Either we're in the light or we're in the darkness. And every day we got to keep repositioning ourselves back into the light. How are we going to do it? We're going to start with humility. Jesus says, you want to become great in the kingdom of heaven? You got to humble yourself like this little child. Just simple childlike faith and belief and humility. We're going to humble ourselves in relationship to God, humble ourselves in relationship to other people. Because it's the humble who are given grace, it's the humble who are exalted and promoted. And we're going to receive this forgiveness by faith. We're going to receive it from God. We're going to forgive ourselves in the middle. And we're going to walk in grace and forgiveness with other people. We're going to take our position in love today, kind and patient and gentle, always assuming the best, keeping no record of wrongs, delighting in the truth, always hoping, always trusting, always persevering, because love never fails. And we're going to take our position in gratitude and praise today. One of the greatest expressions of faith, and it's one of the easiest ways to keep our positioning all day low. And being in position is a big deal. Because it puts us in position to receive everything that God has for us. Imagine a quarterback and a receiver. The, re the quarterback throws a pass and the receiver runs the wrong direction. He's out of position to receive. And when we step into the light. We're stepping into Christ and God has taken everything that he has. And he gave it all to Jesus. And we get this amazing opportunity. Do we get to be in him today? So this day today, we have access to his spirit and power and presence, his love and peace and joy, his mind and wisdom, his health and energy are available today. 
He's got more than enough time to get everything you need to get done today. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He's got purpose and grace for our life today. We become part of his family. We have fellowship with God, fellowship with people as we walk in the light. And we have to learn how to receive this. And then we've got to learn how to get it flowing through us out into the world where we see the fruit or the result of it in our lives. So our first step is to get in position. Then our second step is to magnify the light. To magnify is to make bigger or greater. It's going to turn up the brightness of this light within us. And it's going to expand the capacity where God can flow more of all these good things through us. It's also going to get this new covenant rooted and established in our heart. Where we have hearts that understand God's grace. It makes us more fixed and consistent and immovable when the issues and pressures of life come our way. And to magnify the light, it's all about what we focus on. Where is our focus and attention throughout the day? I think of it as meditation. When I think of meditation, I think of constant repetition. What are those things that we're just rolling over and over and over on the inside that we're consistently speaking about throughout the day? And you probably had the example. We had some issue or problem, but the more you meditated on that problem, the more you thought about it, the more you'll toil the way on that problem in your mind. It seemed like the problem just grew bigger. Well, that same principle works in the other direction. If we'll learn to let go of those problems, cast those cares onto God and magnify him as bigger, he's going to grow bigger on the inside of us. Now, this is not denying that there's issues or problems. It's simply choosing to bring them into the light. We're going to magnify God as bigger than those issues and problems. Because we trust that he can solve those problems a whole lot better than we can. He's much better at it than we are. But he does give us the choice. We could choose not to do any of this. We could stay stuck in pride and rebellion, bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, venting, complaining, pouting, toiling away in our mind, trying to figure it all out rather than resting and trusting in God. And that's where we've got to learn to recognize the symptoms. Because wherever we're positioned, whatever we're magnifying is going to produce some symptoms in our life. When we're out of position, there might be the tendency to retaliate at people. We might withhold good things that we know to do. We might avoid people or give them the silent treatment. On the inside, you feel this heaviness and weight and pressure like it's all sitting on you. Might have feelings of hopelessness or helplessness or powerlessness. Like you're trapped or you're stuck and it seems like there's no way out. Low energy is another big symptom of this. I think of it like a black hole. It just sucks the energy right out of you. Then emotionally, there's the fear and stress and worry, the dread of the future. We're toiling away in our mind, envisioning all these worst case scenarios, trying to figure it all out. And we get stuck in these vicious cycles that just seem to keep repeating over and over again. But when we take our position in the light. There's this rest in our soul. There's this fullness and completeness in him. And when we rest, God goes to work. And now everything is free and easy and effortless. His energy begins to flow through us. His peace and joy and love and spirit and power, his mind and wisdom, it all begins to flow. He gives us more than enough time because he makes us so much more efficient to get it all done today. We've got purpose and grace in Christ Jesus for today. We've got fellowship with God, fellowship with people. We don't want to isolate ourselves. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And all of a sudden, we've got hope in any and every situation. Because we've got God with us. And if all this weren't enough, God gives us this amazing gift of grace. That if we ever get off track, it just takes a moment to turn it right back around, get back into the light again. It can be totally out of position and get right back in two seconds later. Every day, life's throwing stuff at us to try to knock us out of position, try to get us to magnify the wrong things. And sometimes we miss it. And it's learning to recognize those symptoms and turn it back around quickly. How do we do it? I think it starts with humility. Father, forgive me. I've missed it right now. We receive that forgiveness from him. We forgive ourselves and the middle stop beating ourselves up over it. If we need to say we're sorry or reconcile with somebody else, we take those steps. And then we just start praising and thanking him for his grace and his goodness and his love. 
and that what he put within us is more than enough. I like to pray this very simple prayer. Father, thank you that what you put within me is more than enough to handle whatever's coming my way today in a beautiful, graceful way. Help me tap into it and see it flowing in my life at a greater level today. You pray that simple prayer, you'll be amazed. Just the weight lifts off you. You feel the peace and the joy and the love just begin to wash over you on the inside again. And then our third fundamental, we're going to stay tuned in today. Every day, God's trying to teach us and train us and navigate us throughout the day. But we've got to stay tuned into him. My favorite way to do this is with a journal before bed. And lately, we've talked about installing what we call some filters at the top of our journal. These filters are for navigation, to help us navigate successfully throughout the day. And it's a reminder, we're going to reinforce God's standards for our life. They're just simple. These filters are just simple phrases, maybe one word, maybe a short sentence that we keep rewriting every night before bed as a way to reinforce it. We're making a commitment to walk in God's ways of doing things. It might look something like this. God is working continually for my good. And I'm going to do continually good for others. And that short phrase helps to navigate us when we're tempted to stress or worry or retaliate at people or give them the silent treatment. We've got this reminder. Wait a minute. God is working for my good. Don't have to worry about that. He's working for my good. And I'm going to do continually good for other people, even when they push my buttons, even when they get under my skin. I'm going to do continually good for them, just like God does for me. And then I like to start my journal with gratitude and praise to get in position. And then to magnify what went well today. What are all the ways I saw God showing up today? Because the more we look for them, the more of them we're going to see. And then I like to ask this question. God, what were you trying to show me today? And just get still and listen, reflect back over the day. Whatever comes into my mind, just begin to write those things down. It's important to get out of our heads and onto the paper because it helps us to remember and not forget. And then we've got to stay tuned in throughout the day. Every day he's trying to navigate us throughout the day. If you ever feel like you're losing that connection with him, just take a couple minutes. Take one to two minutes. Just slow down. Take a couple deep breaths. Get connected back to him. Get aware of his presence with you. Think about like plugging in a phone. We're going to get charged up or powered up in him again. And then our fourth fundamental. Do what you know to do today. Walk in the light that you have. The final thing I've learned to do in my journal before bed is to plan out the upcoming day with God. And I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do today? Because I learned sometimes I was getting out ahead of God. I'm toiling away in my mind, trying to figure things out, trying to force things to happen ahead of schedule. On the other side, sometimes I was getting behind God because I was procrastinating on things that I knew to do. What do you know to do today? That becomes the plan for today. And then we wake up like a kid on Christmas morning, excited for the day. And we remember this very important principle that the first thing out of our mouth every morning sets the tone for the whole day. And as I began to learn about this, I began to seek God. What's the best thing for us to say every morning? I felt like he was taking me back to Genesis chapter one, the very beginning of the Bible. The very first words we see God speak. Let there be light. And so I've begun to start my days this way. Very first thing in the morning, the first words out of my mouth. Let there be light. And it's amazing how just such a simple little thing just brings a different energy into the day. Then we're going to get connected with God. We're going to start walking out that plan together in partnership with him today. Just full confidence that he's right there with us every step of the way. He's going to do the work through us today. And when we get to that place of confident faith, his grace begins to surge through us. He begins to go to work. He begins to beautify our lives, to bring these beautiful, perfect gifts from above. Things that we could never make happen in our own strength. And beauty is attractive and magnetic and just begins to pull more and more of everything God has for us into our lives. Let's take a look at the scripture today. This is John chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Now that word prune, like we said, it can be translated as to prune or to cut back, or it can be translated as lifted up. And like I said, you go online, you'll find people arguing back and forth. Does it mean prune? Does it mean lift up? And people are getting nasty with each other and these type of things. And what I've learned is it means both. You can prune and lift up at the same time. If you do it the right way, you can prune and lift up at the same time. So we're going to be asking for God's help today. And I want you to think about this too. Immediately, as soon as I cut that branch off that was weighing it down, immediately the other branches lift. It happens immediately. So we're going to be asking for God's help today. God, if there's any branches in our life that need to be pruned and also lifted up at the same time, we're asking for your help to do that. And I believe as we do this, you're going to feel this immediate just lifting in your spirit. You're going to feel this immediate lifting and elevating in you. It's going to happen at the same time. This weight's just going to come off of you. So, Father, we're asking for your help with that today. We thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in your remembrance of me. Just take a moment to remember. God didn't have to send Jesus. He could have left us on our own, separated from him forever, walking in darkness. But he chose the way of love. He chose to send his one and only son. Jesus is willing to come and humble himself, you know, even unto death on a cross. He's rejected by his people, betrayed by his own disciple, spit on and whipped and hit and mocked and ridiculed. Nailed to a cross. Worst of all, I believe he's separated from God. The cup of God's wrath is poured onto his body. Isaiah 53, it says it pleased God to crush him. His body was destroyed. But on the other side, he's raised back to life. He's victorious over death. And now that same victorious power, that same spirit that raised him from the dead, it lives on the inside of us. He connects us back to God, makes us right and holy and perfect in his sight through his one sacrifice. So, Father, we thank you for this bread. And I should bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. It's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness. He transfers us into the light. In the old covenant, it had to be ratified in blood. The people had to be sprinkled with blood. This new covenant is sealed in the blood of Jesus. You can have this personal relationship with God. This covenant relationship with him. And I believe as you experience him both pruning and lifting at the same time. It's just going to help you to know him that much more. To know his heart and his goodness and his love that much more. If you have a juice, you can take a juice. All right, let's talk about some health and fitness stuff. Talk about pruning the workout. Sometimes I've seen in, in physical exercise, 
it's easy to get distracted and kind of weighed down by working on stuff that doesn't really matter, that doesn't really produce that, that much results. And really to make it all very simple, here's what I found to focus on. Improve your strength. Improve your ability to move your own body weight well. Improve what's called your relative strength. How much weight can you lift per pound of body weight? Improve your relative strength. Let's improve your ability to do more and more work without getting tired. And let's improve speed because to improve speed usually requires improvements in speed, in flexibility, in mobility, and the ability to move our own body as well. And when I say speed, I want to work both ends. I want the ability to move fast, but I also want the ability to have good breaks and be able to slow down as needed as well. You focus on these things. I want to get stronger. I want to increase my ability to do more work without getting tired. And I want to increase my ability to move with speed or to control the speed at which I'm moving. You focus on those things. You'd be amazed at what it does in your, in your fitness. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.